Christ, this music is so cool. I wouldn't have you DJ at my party. I would just have you as the guest star of my party. Yeah. I actually called Bryce in as a guest star of a party on Saturday. I had I had I had people uh, uh, over and they were like, "Hey, uh, uh, is Bryce around?" And I was like, uh, "I don't know, man. I can text him." And I texted Bryce, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I'll be right over." And he came in, and he was like, "Mick Jagger showing up at 1 a.m. at the China <laughs> Club," and everybody was happy. And he came in, and he sang Japanese karaoke, and and was just the hit. If you would like to have Bryce at your party, be sure yeah. to go partybryce.pizza and sign up. And if you want a virtual appearance, go to Cameo and uh, Big Boy Bryce will uh, well, maybe all if right. he has the time. Hey, now. <laughs> I don't know what that means. In inspo is inspiration. Gotcha. See, Andrew, I know what the kids are up to. That was that was real chuggy of you. Oh, like that you should be skinnier, so you need thin inspiration. Hmm. That sounds like uh, 5,000 words on Jezebel. <laughs> I don't even know if Jezebel's still good. I guess I, if, for whatever reason, I, I've, I've fallen out of having Jezebel things randomly cross my radar. I guess I'm on social media less. That's probably it. Was that Gawker? Was it where they, were they killed by, or the decimated by all the Gawker exodus? Yes, and I should not be muted anymore. But um, uh, yeah, that was that's one where uh, uh, they they yeah they're a Gawker now Geo media thing. Yeah, and uh, they're 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 having some editorial issues at the moment. Uh, who isn't? Who isn't? You want to know what? Now, who else had editorial issues? The Bible. Boom. So, boom. You know, uh, and everything worked out well for them. <laughs> for them. The team, the team over at Bible are doing the, great. Yeah, the, the the executive leadership team at Bible at, at the Bible. When we invented Bible 2021. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, Andrew, how was your weekend? Uh, uh, weekend was cool. I uh, got to do some coding. Got to hang out with a buddy of mine working on a project. So that was cool. And then uh, <laughs> I feel guilty though. I'm like, hey, let's go for a walk. And I do this Burbank uh, North Hollywood death walk, and I realize that like. It's like a good five mile walk. I should have warned them. <laughs> yeah, you gotta let people know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've been going on these long walks, and then Ashley on Sunday is like, "Oh, let's go for a walk together." And I'm like, "I'm like, cool, yeah." Of, uh, of, uh, and she's like, "I thought we we're just gonna go for a walk around the block." And then she's like, "Oh no, 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 let's go more on like the way that you go." And I'm like, "All right, like, so you know, like it's very hot, and and y'all, you you all know Ashley. She's uh, uh, so white. She's translucent. So I'm like, like this is you're gonna get burned. Like you get burned really easily. Mm. And uh, sure enough, she got burned. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, you, you got to lotion. You certainly have to lotion up. She, oh, she did. She, she did. did. Oh, is that how long y'all were out there? Longer that you know, uh, forty five minutes, sixty minutes, sunscreen stuff. Uh, yeah, it was a little over an hour that we wound up being out there, but wow. uh, no, Friday I went 11 miles Woo. down to, uh, wow. almost, almost to downtown. Yeah. I was about to say, you, my you, you can get, you can get a pretty good distance, 11 yeah. miles. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And then I walked back. 20, um, so that's 22 right there. No, no, no. So that was, it was like, <laughs> like, like five and a half and then five and a half. Uh, righty. Hello, everybody. We're going to do weird things here in just a minute. Uh, how are we looking, Andrew? Uh, we're looking good. Looking good. I'm just pulling up the, uh, source of a story. Cool, yeah. Somebody sent me. Gotta make sure you're, yeah. uh, good to go when we're, when you're good to go. Yeah. yeah I, had a, I had a good weekend. Yeah, we had, uh, I went over the other day, which was, which was fun. Uh, uh, yesterday I just relaxed. Just have a nice relaxing day. Then, yeah. Sometimes you just need a... Yeah, I just need a good. Oh, I just need a, a good layback day. 
Uh, yeah, mostly because uh, uh, I was up till three o'clock in a GD morning because <laughs> Bryce, uh, Bryce and I were talking, and and uh, yeah, I, I uh, oh. God, that's a mistake. Uh, I can't believe mm-hmm. I would do that. Yeah, a ne- lot. Next, next time the now, whole not now. No. no. Like if I would have known, <laughs> I would have I would have kicked Bryce the hell out. Like uh, I didn't know it was that late. I got in the bed and I was just like, like this is insane. Threw my whole my whole my whole day off. I was so frightened and confused. Start over. Oh, that's good. I can probably turn it down a little bit too. <clears throat> All right. I may have to turn this air back on, but that's fine. Already, I was just uh, somebody had sent me a story, and it's in a story before, and I'd used it, and I forgot to credit them. Oh, I was feeling guilty. Ah, gotcha. All right. Alrighty. Well, if you're good to go, momento. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, then uh, we'll count you in, Andrew, to start the Weird Things podcast here in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, sir. Gentlemen, what you imagine? You're cops. Okay. Okay. Not just any cops, you're Scottish cops. Oh, Hi. Scott cops. That's the other one. Is that? Oh, is that's that Irish. Oh, yeah. Crap. No, yeah. You like, like it's more, it's Scottish. Huh? We're Scottish hey, cops. There are Irish people in Scotland. Okay, so I'm so, sure there are. So who's, but, but they're not. So they would. Now? They be described as Irish Scottish cops. Uh, <laughs> you know, now oh, we're just Scottish, Scottish cops. We're we're pure Scottish cops, laddie. Uh, right? I like to solve you're, the crimes. <laughs> so uh, you're you're rook, you're rookies. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can't wait cops. to have a career solving crimes. All right, so uh, I'm trying to figure. Do you want me out. to fill with more improv? I can, I can, I can <laughs> yes, keep building please, this character. Please. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. you're maybe in the like, car. Okay, maybe there's like a tactical kilt. I, I, I just got out of, I, I got out of the academy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to solve crimes now, laddie. So you're you're both in your car, yeah. right? Yeah. You're driving along, Woo. okay. And uh, you look out the window. It's nighttime, yeah. right? Well, we're we're just engaging in normal Scottish banter, like mm-hmm. like like. Uh, do you think we should secede from the UK? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, and then, all, what do we see? You look in like your rearview mirror, all right. and you see up in the sky uh-huh. a light, a light, <gasps> a light, a light. Like it. All right, it's so in the sky, light. a light in the sky. You're like. It looks like a drone. I right? think it's a drone. Oh, they're they're droning us. They're droning us. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, who, they're droning us. Someone is it? Someone? What, what do you what do you mean they're droning us? <laughs> don't like, don't. like what, are you, what are you, we're just Scott cops, right? You, uh, we're just trying to figure it out we, now. Well, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you keep you keep going. I'm gonna right? keep driving. <laughs> Still there. Uh, so it's droning us. It's droning us. Well, uh, all right. Now, I mean, if it was a drone, okay, it probably would have had to land, a move, and a recharge. Mm. Well, it's got a long battery, so you keep going. You pull into a shopping center, uh-huh. you get out of your car, and you look. It's still there. And we just see it as a light. Yeah. And and so we can't really t- Do we know what color the light is? It's probably like a little white light. Is like it a white light? Is it? Is it? Does it seem far away? Does it seem more like a star, or does it? Or can? Is there enough it parallax? Like it's, it, look, it looks like it's up in the sky. You know, it's a distance away. Um, uh, now I'm, I'm. I'm a master. I'm a master. Uh, you know, I'm a master of my star charts. Of course, that shouldn't be there. <laughs> uh, this is, we're already building out. 
just a great <laughs> buddy cop thing as uh, 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 I just want to solve crime. Scott Cop is with his partner who is consulting his star chart right. as uh, we see a <laughs> mysterious... No, it's in the back seat. Let me go get it. And he lays it across the hood. And... Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's like, nope, it shouldn't be there. It's right. like, well, thank you. <laughs> the mysterious thing floating in front of us shouldn't be there. Cool. <laughs> if you use your flashlight, we can make this glow in the dark. <laughs> All right. So uh, I have one uh, on my ceiling and I keep inviting you over to see it. <laughs> is there anybody else in this area? This is you said uh, we were in a shopping center parking lot. It's it's late. It's nobody else around. OK, so nobody is nobody's called us about it. We, we just saw it while we were driving. Yeah. All I right. mean, at this point, you know, what do you do? Do you call in for help? What do you do? Well, I'm definitely taking pictures and video of it. Just okay. so people know what 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 we're what we're up to, and, and I'm off camera going, "Whoa, look at that! Whoa, do you see that? That's not supposed to be there. I know my star charts." <laughs> um, yeah, and then I guess I'm definitely calling it in, and I'm I'm asking whether or not there's any kind of, you know, activity that the police department was was notified about before tonight. Yeah, they're like, no, no, no. Let's. Uh, you, you're, you're seeing this, and you're you're pretty sure about it. And then, I mean, in that case, then then uh, cops in Scotland have guns, right? <laughs> Yes. Get, in this case, yes. And then I don't know, man. I think you just want to aim at I'm God. To, you just want to. I'm not saying that or highlight, I'm not highlighter saying, swords. I'm not <laughs> saying I'm gonna shoot it. I'm saying I might have to fire a warning shot so it knows <laughs> that that I can shoot it. Right. So all right, I I I I, I hmm. remove my service weapon and I fire a standard issue uh, maritime warning shot uh, across its starboard bow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Pick you, okay, pick you. Now, that's what that's what their guns sound like too. Now your supervisor pulls up. Yeah. This is what are you doing? Uh firing a standard issue maritime <laughs> warning shot across its starboard bow. It's all standard, sir. Yeah. He's like, you know, you know we're not in the navy, right? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, sure, but uh uh It is a ship. Ancient never seen master and commander. <laughs> like I just took a lot of uh life lessons from there, including the idea that I will warn this unidentified craft before I shoot it down. I'm sorry that I've got empathy and love in my life. So uh your commander's like, uh, uh, is that a Star Trek there? A what? A star chart? A star chart. Yeah. Oh, it no, don't worry. The, yeah, We've also it, previously ruled out that this is a star. Mm -hmm. We've consulted the star chart. If you have a He's flashlight, like, I, I can I, show you even if it's dark. He's like, hold on. Let me, let me, can I flip this over? This yeah. is the planet chart. Ah, <gasps> uh, crap. Mm. Wrong chart. Damn That's it. That's Jupiter. You just shot at Jupiter. Uh. Now I got to write up shooting at Jupiter, which is a thing. That I have to write up my my cops for. But not now. Hold on, Jupiter. We can't. We can't. We Jupiter ain't in a Scottish parking lot. Jupiter's fine. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Wait. Hold on. So it was just Jupiter was that bright that the cops got called about it. Well, it was a story. This was sent to us sent to us by Stephen Greenhill, and somebody put the clue right there. The Jovian Jovian. Uh, and. What it was is a rookie Glasgow police officer. She called for help from her fellow officers after being pursued for miles through the city by a drone, or so she thought. Only <laughs> they realized that this was, in fact, Jupiter. Uh, so wow. she apparently in, tried in, to in shake this... free of it, you know, doing some, uh, you know, dramatic driving, quick turns, whatnot. And uh, so... Uh, <laughs> That's, I mean, she, this poor she lady. Was found, this poor lady. She was, she was found standing in the police yard with her hood up, trying to hide from the drone. Uh, well, so they bl the drones blink and have, like, if you've ever seen one, right? They have like a front and a back with like separate, different, like different colored lights, and they blink. I look. Also, I don't know this lady. I, I wish her all the happiness in the world, but sometimes uh, uh, the universe tells you that you shouldn't have the job that you currently have. And if you're, <laughs> if, you, if, if this is happening within your first year on the gig that you are find yourself huddling uh, uh, for fear of being pursued by Jupiter, then ah, maybe, I mean, here, 
I we comedically did that entire thing <laughs> where it ended with me firing my gun into the air. Uh, that's probably a better prospective police officer than the lady who thinks that <laughs> Jupiter is chasing her. There's this uh, uh, at the end. This is from the Daily Record. Here they have. Uh, Tom Wood, a retired deputy chief constable, the former Lothian and Borders Police, said the story might have of a similar incident years ago. He said, a young officer discovered an old vase wrapped in a rag and reported as being a Ming Dynasty vase, which is worth thousands. It wasn't, of course, but from that day forward, he was known as Ming. This young lady will probably find herself with a nickname for the rest of her career. The story will be told in years to come. The real test is how she handles it. I, I mean, <laughs> number one, uh, quit. You don't deserve it, lady. You want to know what? Every once in a while, we all got to hit the reset button in life. Uh, you don't deserve to 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 be live this existence. Don't be. Don't ming yourself. And and uh, yeah. uh, you know that's 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 ridiculous. She's yeah. I mean, she's going to be tortured relentlessly. I mean, mm -hmm. these are cops. Like and and and. They, and it made they, international news. Yeah, like like it's it's like like who would you among like like notorious kind of like ball busting? It's what like union workers, cops, and and you know the uh, uh, after a few rails at uh, you know some finance uh, uh, meeting or something like that. Like that's a lot of that that is that is a lot of uh, chest thumping. So I will and I will remind you all of this story. One evening in 1960 years, this person was preparing to give a speech at a Lions Club meeting. At about 7.15 p.m. Eastern, one of the guests called his attention to a strange object that was visible about 30 degrees above the horizon. This person described the object as being bright white and as being about as bright as the moon. It was said to have closed in on where he was standing, but have stopped beyond a stand of pine trees. The object then ascended to change color, first blue, then red, then back to white before receding in the distance. He felt that this was self-illuminated and not solid in nature, and he filed a report, a UFO report about it. And, uh, the, and it, quote, there were about 20 of us standing outside a little restaurant, I believe a high school lunchroom, and a kind of green light appeared in the western sky. This was right after sundown. It got brighter and brighter and eventually disappeared. It didn't have any solid substance. It was a very peculiar light. None of us could understand what it was. Um, and they went on to repeat the story years later and describe this, saying that it was very mysterious, and so they went on to report this. Who was this? I mean, is it like the sun? <laughs> no, who made this report? Did, oh. did you say what year it was? This was in 1973. 1969, 1969. 1969, okay. Oh, jeez. Charles Manson. Close, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, was, it, was it a politician? Yes. Oh, okay. Is it Joe Biden? Is it Joe Biden? No, oh, okay. no. But I'm sure he's told that story. <laughs> Jupiter was a bad dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, come on, man, come, come on, down come down on, here. man, come on, <laughs> man. Uh, hmm. uh, who a politician? Was it Bernie? Did Bernie? No, no, no. Hmm. No. Yeah, I don't know. Jimmy Carter. Yeah, it's Jimmy Carter. Hey! Jimmy Carter's yeah. really the Jimmy Carter UFO incident. You can look it up on YouTube. That was a thing that made it into UFO lore. I mean, yeah. you know, I, 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 I said this when uh, I remember people were making fun of uh, Ben Carson because Ben Carson went on his whole thing about how the pyramids were not used to store pharaohs, but rather were there for grain. And it's like, yeah. There are a few things. UFOs are one of them. The pyramids are another that I guarantee you, if you asked 100 people and they were all honest with you, the diversity of opinions on those two subjects alone would shock you. <laughs> like, like, if you think that there is homogenous opinion on the existence of UFOs and what happened with the pyramids, you would be shocked at the colorful things that that people believe about those two issues specifically. Mm hmm. And it's yeah, it, you know, when you do, it's easy to go do ask people on the street out stuff, and you're going to get enough kind of crazy responses. And then you can even ask. I used to do this when I used to talk about critical thinking in schools. I'd sit in a room full of like all the heads of departments, and I, I used to bring up this 
example till I stopped because I realized I was embarrassing people. I was like, I'm like, oh, like seventy percent of college graduates from Ivy League, you know, some number like that, don't even know what causes the seasons. Yeah. And then I get crickets, and I get this look from teachers that like don't call on me because I don't think I can answer that question. Uh, <laughs> it's because it's because the Earth's sh- orbit around the sun is 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 an ellipsis is an ellipsis no three, it's three that dots because why. jupiter Christ. is scaring because the, the earth, earth and the earth reacts to it in various different That's ways right. the earth moves about 400 okay. to about 1000 feet further and farther away from the sun and that's that's enough is that your final answer bryce <laughs> of course not no it's... okay <laughs> it's like, it's like, people say that though they're like right. oh like like okay so why is it summer in australia you know when it's winter here and then it's like Oh, I mean, it has a wobble, folks. Those, you know, the Earth's got that slight rotationary angle on it. So it's not doesn't spin perfectly on it mm-hmm. right, relative to the sun. Yeah, relative to the sun. Yeah. So it's just a little. Ooh, so. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, yes, Earth tilt, easiest way to put it. Um, and that's and that's an, and that's not a like oh you dumbs you don't get it it's a very because if you look at all the examples we generally see of the Earth orbiting the Sun we see the Earth with this orbit the spin that's perpendicular to the Sun and yeah. all this and if you if that's the model in your head like yeah how would you deconstruct to figure out what's going on so yeah. um, I am there was a very very it was a very interesting YouTube video which a thing that I think is really, uh, let me pull up the channel here. Um, he does really, uh, Veritasium, this guy does pretty good uh, explainer videos, really good, exceptional entertaining uh, explainer videos. And he did a thing a while ago, which was on a wind cart. Wind carts are basically, they have, uh, that's uh, Derek Muller. A wind cart is basically, it's like a cart with a propeller, and the propeller is connected to a chain that drives the wheels. You can put a wind cart, and he did a video, so it showed this wind cart and showed how, you know, out there on the salt flats, the wind cart moved faster than the wind. Okay? Huh. And, and, it's, and it's a counterintuitive thing, because you see this propeller spinning kind of, you know, slowly around, and this thing's going faster than the wind, and you're like, well, how is this possible? Well... He had some people were like, no, this is ridiculous. He even had a physics professor who I believe is at uh, UCLA, uh, you know, active professor, physics professor, who said, no, you're wrong. This was just the wind was just faster up there or whatever. This is impossible. I'll show you the math to do this. And then they had an exchange back and forth. And finally, they put together a $10,000 bet. Hmm. And to basically be the judges of this, they had Neil deGrasse Tyson. Bill Nye, the science guy, and Sean Carroll. Okay, so they brought them in to sort of do this, and they made their cases sort of back and forth to sort of see what's going on, what's wrong. And uh, it it was interesting because this the professor makes a very cogent, no, this is why this is, you know, this is why this isn't working, and this is because it's going on here, whatever. So Mueller went through and had to sort of put together a series of experiments to show, break down the physics. And one of the things that's really cool, Bryce, you'll see an example, he uses a two-by-four further on in the video the thing that got people tripped up and i think the thing that tripped up the professor is the fact that that wind energy that's at that's pushing that propeller is going to a chain which is driving the wheels okay so basically it's like you know here's an example using a lever it's like a lever you're basically doing that to basically turning that power into getting you faster speed as far as moving to the wheels and it's you can, it's one of these, you, the smarter you are, sometimes you can just trip yourself up there, like, oh, no, because of this, because of that. So by using examples of levers, and then he has an example using actually a, a physical board and some wheels, he shows how a little bit, and that energy gets transferred to spin these wheels at a faster rate. And it's a neat thing when you see this, if you see this, you know, his example in motion, which I think is a little bit further ahead. Uh, and then you know, finally, the professor conceded uh, and said, oh, I guess I was wrong. And you know, the $10,000 was given up, but I think it's going to some, you know, science charity or something like this. Um, you'll see the, in the video, you see him like standing in his living room, holding the, the, this big two by four and a little wheeled sort of cart like thing. Mm-hmm. So there we go. So watch this. He has this thing. That's this big wheel sitting on top of two smaller wheels. He puts this big two by four onto it and he's going to start pushing this thing. And now watch what happens as he pushes this thing. 
the top wheel spins backwards, but the it powers the smaller wheels, which make it shoot further ahead. Oh. It's very counterintuitive. Oh. It's a very, very counterintuitive sort of example. So uh, if you go to Veritasium, the, this video is called A Physics Professor Beat Me $10,000, I'm Wrong. I am pretty sure that physics professor is a smarter person than me. Okay, <laughs> I am very sure this person is a very smart person. And it's a good example to see how very intelligent people can get into sort of a framework or something like this and get locked into it. And the scary thing about this is this is physics. This is mathematical, provable stuff with the right model. There's no ambiguity. Once you know what you're, yeah. what you're reconstructing, it's very easy to see this. When we start talking about things in biology, when we start talking about health and we start talking about viruses and stuff where there is far more fuzziness. Yeah. That's when you that's when I get really anxious when people start saying, no, this is a fact. We know this or this or this or that. It's like you can't even get you know, look at look at mathematicians in the money hall problem. You know, we talked about before, like people who are smarter than me could get argue and tripped up over things that are kind of basic. So when it comes to things that are fuzzy, I just, I'm like, well, you know, maybe. <laughs> it's it's just always good to go in with an open mind. And and yeah. uh, to be, to be honest, uh, a s salute to the guy who lost $10,000 and, and, and said yeah. he was wrong. Like that, like, I feel like we, we, you know, and, and we can get into kind of internet culture reasons why I think it, it is sometimes exacerbated, but like, uh, we, we, it seems like sometimes we live in a world where the goal is to never be wrong. And I would, I would like to normalize people just being loud wrong. Just, just, you know, if, if you are just go own up to it and move on. It's not the end of the world. And, and, uh, uh this is not a thing that is just, you know, it's, it's, it's nowhere near as simple as smart equals never wrong. Dumb equals always wrong. You know, uh, there is yeah. a million different ways that you can look at that. Yeah, being able to say, hey, I learned this or I learned this now. I, I, those are the people I like to read. Those are the people, those are the scientists and researchers I like to follow are people like, well, I thought this and then I saw this thing and now I think like this because I know, oh, they're going to be the most open and they're going to have the most interesting insights. Yeah. Uh, here's an interesting insight. Going to patreon.com slash weird things. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you can continue to fund this show by giving us your money. You also get an RSS feed where you get the After Things podcast before anybody else. That's where we talk about our own entrepreneurial pursuits. Give you the inside sauce as to how you can continue to do your own projects, either for fun or profit or both. Thank you to everybody who already supports us. And if you don't, well, maybe consider it. Patreon.com slash weird things. Yeah. And... Thank you to Stephen Greenhill and the others that send us stories. We appreciate that. And also for after things, we love, love, love uh, stories after things. We love it when people send us questions because otherwise we'll talk about ourselves, which we love. <laughs> love that. But too. We love to. Yeah. We love, love that. So uh, got another law enforcement public service story here. Okay. okay. So, uh, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know where to go with this other than... Um, <laughs> Says the guy who selects like the story. Eating you up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> imagine, yeah. imagine you break into a place, like you crawl through a window or something, and it's a little too high up. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we're, young, we so, so we're you're the you're criminals now. All right, we're the criminals now. Yeah, but you're like you're not you're a kid. You're young. You're like you're just you don't know what you're doing. Kind uh, of all right, thing. so like, we're, and we're the innocent. We're 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 lil criminals. L i l criminals <laughs> yeah. and uh, scamps. You're little scamps. Oh, we're little Scram. scamps. And and you know I've got a a a, 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 a hobo bindle for some reason, and and uh, uh, Bryce is in a uh, uh, his Sunday best, but it's it's got dirt on it. <laughs> yeah, I've got a I've got a bandaid right here he's on my nose. He's got a bandaid over his nose, like he's yeah. a nineteen nineties baseball player. And <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we so we broke into a window, and we're, we're so a it's little too high. high up. How high up are we talking? Like oh, we're like about five feet, ten feet. 20 feet more too too high for you to crawl back out okay Ew. now you break in 
you know, break in, like crawl through a window, and like you're just curious. Maybe you're looking for some, you know, fruit roll ups or something like this. And then owners come home and find you there. Oh, right? oh, oh, so we're breaking into a uh, to a house. Okay. Yeah, you're in a house. Yeah. Okay. So we've broken owners into a house. We now we can't but get we're out. Too high up to get out. That's why. That's right. I thought it would be like a like a store or something or like something where you had. Like a warehouse, like a wa- where exactly. you would where you would find uh, high ceilings, high ceilings, and and I don't know candy because we're little scamps and that's we'd right. want to, we'd want something in there, yeah. so that's why we broke in. But no, this is a house, so, so yeah. So anyhow, authorities are called. So we're caught red handed. You know, caught red handed. It's just one, just one of you. It's you, Justin. We'll okay, say just uh, you. I, so I'm just like like. Like, hey, lay off me, Mister! Like, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I got my hands on my hips. But and... you're like an adorable kid. You're an adorable kid, though. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm like, sure. like, like, meh, like, 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 uh, boy, like. And then they pull out a camera. Then they pull out a camera. Oh. And they were like, oh, oh we're gonna take, we're oh, gonna take the photo. Oh my God. Look at this. What's your reaction? It's that. Oh. Uh, this is this is uh, like some. I got my camera up. I'm about to take the photo of the delightful little scamp that crawled into the window. What do you do? I turn my head. I don't want to be. F- uh, it's kind of hard to turn your head. Kind of hard to turn your head because because they, they got their hands on your shoulders I... and whatnot. I uh, try to kick the camera. Ha! Ah, uh, there you go. Kick. No, you're too far away. Too far away. Uh, oh. I uh, loose, uh, loose, loose your weight. Loose your weight. Just, just collapse. Just collapse. I collapse into a uh. pile on the floor. With your my... hands are free. Your hands are free, though. Your hands are free. Though. Oh, so what do you oh. Do? oh, I cover my face. Cover your face. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Let's go look this up. Embarrassed raccoon covers his. <laughs> look up embarrassed <laughs> raccoon. <laughs> I don't know how to get it because it's the picture's all what it's all about. Oh, the look at him. Oh, wait. <laughs> We've got him here from the Huffington Post. And, uh,. Oh, oh boy! This little fella definitely does not want to be seen uh, by anybody here. Uh, oh, oh! Look at him! <laughs> it, no, oh, the shame! Oh, oh. The shame! <laughs> there are days, and there are days. That's what that one says. Oh, poor and, little buddy! Uh, I mean, and obviously that's that's you know uh, uh some uh, split second photo thing or you know they, but there are just these like moments where animals think they're people or we forget that we're animals yeah fair point oh, yeah yeah so uh yeah i did i and that's dalton georgia which is actually not too far from where my brother and his family lives i told you the story about my dad's pet raccoon i have heard it Privately, but I don't know if we've told it uh, so, here on the on, on on the Weird Things podcast. My my dad my dad is a lover of all animals. My dad, growing up, I mean, he was also he loved to keep them as pets, loved to eat them, all of that. He had a pet bat. You know, we we when I was a baby, we had like a pet bobcat because he found it in the woods, and it's like, oh, this is a cat. You know, needs a home. And uh, my mom was never very happy about that bobcat. And the day it ran away, she was very happy. So. <laughs> My dad had a pet skunk. Uh, oh, my yeah. dad had, uh, you know, snakes, everything. But my dad had a pet raccoon when he was in college. And this raccoon, uh, raccoons are wild animals. They, they can, they can be, they can tolerate people. They can like to be pet. They can be around, but they're kind of wild animals. And that raccoon, he took it with him to college, and then he was taking it home. You know, he was going to, to taking it back home, and they were at a friend's house, and they put the raccoon in a garage. And he went into the garage, and he saw the raccoon had tore open part of the garage and escaped. Oh, jeez! And, and and you know, I'm like, oh, dad, that's a sad story. Goes, oh no, I, I I found him. I go, what do you mean you found him? Well, I called the police. Oh, what, you, you <laughs> called the police. As your pet? For your lost raccoon. Rick. He goes, yeah, I called the police about my lost raccoon. And what did they say? They said, oh, he's here at the police station eating <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> my dad my dad goes to the police station. There's the raccoon sitting at a desk. It's eating ice cream like a lost little boy. And apparently the raccoon, you know, was going for a walk. And then it was sitting by the side of the road. And this police cruiser had pulled up. And the raccoon's used to people. And he's like, hi, people. And the police officer opened up his car to get out, and the raccoon ran in, hopped inside, and sat in the passenger seat. And he's like, I bet this is somebody's pet. They took it to the police station, and then my dad got his raccoon back. And then, you know, that was 
one of the many stories eventually this fraternity brothers like this raccoon can't live here because it would tear stuff apart so they had a zoo they had the, the college had its university had its own zoo so he put the raccoon would go live with the other raccoons in the zoo and my dad says yeah i'd go visit him and he would come up to the fence and i put my finger through it and he used to hold on to my finger oh yeah that's too and, uh, precious so uh <laughs> so my family calls me andy and i always ask like like who who is andy like who's andy like there's no andrew there's no andy there's no andy and then my dad was telling the story one day and i go you know what was our coon's name he goes oh randy <laughs> i'm like you realize why you named me yeah you what know you what you've done <laughs> yeah i'm named my I, my name was inspired by a raccoon dad. yeah i was in, so. and, 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 and for the like, record oh. like nobody in andrew's life calls him andy except for his family and his family yeah. is as as not has not picked up that the rest of the planet <laughs> all refers to him as andrew like it is andy it was andy then now and forever yeah but wow. then when i found out that it was a raccoon it made me more adamant about being Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stoic squirrel in our we chat says the raccoon Andy. Randy is yep. raccoon Andy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I I yeah. So oh. there you go. I because I was for years like my brother's James named for my father. Everybody else, their names were somewhere else. I'm like, who who was I named for? And I was like, oh your dad liked the name. I'm like, why did you like the name? Mm. Oh mm. I'm named after Raccoon a Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Raccoon Andrew. Randrew. I see a we little. Named the raccoon, Andrew. I see a little bit of a. Is this is just a little yeah. bit of a. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit. Find the adorable. Right, yeah, there. Oh, there you go with the hand up. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> uh, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, the sad passing. Uh, William F. Nolan passed away, and he is the co-author of Logan's Run. And I mm. just watched this movie last week because, like, '70s science. Nobody's got anything on 70s science fiction movies. Is you have, you know, Star Wars, Logan's Run, Soylent Green, all this dystopian, all this other sort of stuff. And it's sort of late 60s. It's 1968. You had Planet of the Apes in 2001. But um, so he has passed. But Logan's Run was a very interesting story. And the novel was different than the book. In the novel, the, the premise is that in the movie was it in it's like this sort of kind of utopian society but when you turn 30 you basically do this thing called carousel where you basically float up into the sky and get zapped and in theory you're going to be reincarnated as somebody else which actually doesn't happen in the book it happens at 21 and this was sort of this kind of youth culture sort of what happened the fear of population growth and whatever is what spawned a lot of these you know stories like uh soylent green was playing placed on harry harrison's book make room make room etc but just a passing of a guy who I think is uh, was a very interesting writer who wrote a very very wrote some very influential science fiction. He wrote some other stuff, and I would recommend if you get a chance to actually read the books. They're very and uh, they're just a a really neat kind of snapshot of kind of like you know outlook of the world at that time. And that book they went on to write more because there's Logan's Run, Logan's Rolled, Logan's Search. There was a TV series that he actually had a little bit of influence on initially. And then he was able, he was actually contributed in some other stuff, some different television content too. So he's a very, very, very creative person who worked on a lot of different stuff. He wrote uh, some of the stuff for the Trilogy of Terror, I think one and two, which if you ever see that, which was a really cool uh, collection of like horror things, including stuff by Richard Matheson. And then he did, uh, there was a thing, yeah, Bridge Across Trime. I don't know if you ever saw this, but it was based on, they took the, uh, the London Bridge, got moved to Lake Havasu City in Arizona. And so they did this, they, there was a story about what happened if, like, if, you know, the, the spirit of the Jack the Ripper came with it. Ah. Uh, yeah, so, anyhow. Uh, um, that's interesting. And so, so did yeah. he... Would you say that his legacy is is more on the TV and movie side, or more on the the uh, literary fiction side, or or both? I well, Logan's Run is its influence on science fiction and the concepts there of the idea of, and it, there were ideas that have been used before, but never I think put together and popularized like that. Like you know, it when you're when you've done something that becomes a Simpsons gag, 
when yeah. you've done something that can become, you know, makes it way all the way to there. And I don't know if either of you have ever seen the movie in its entirety, but I'm sure you probably saw at some point on TV, some part of it playing or some aspect of it. And it, it just, uh, you look at the, was it the Michael Bay film, the Island, you know, there's a lot of yeah. stuff that's just become that genre of, Oh, we can have a great society, but here's the price we have to pay. I think really came from Logan's run and first the novel, then the movie. I guess when you say so. it like that, that that really is even uh, uh, probably a precursor for like the Purge movies, but like the, mm -hmm. the the idea of of like utopia with a horrifying caveat. <laughs> Although I guess the Purge yeah, movies' you... ideas are like they put that on Front Street. The caveat is the movie, as opposed to the the discovery that this is a thing. Yeah, and that was the because I think that was that was like a that was a Star Trek like a Star Trek episode was yeah. that, and and I don't know. I don't know, and I think that was an idea that's been in you know science fiction prior to Logan's run, but it certainly, as far as like a, a popularizer of that, and uh, but yeah, that he wrote that novel in 1967. I don't know what, if that may have been influenced by some of the story, but yeah, it is that you know again, it's a big tribute to that genre. Well, R.I.P. So. Sir, R.I.P. Always like to uh, uh, you know pay tribute to the legend. So if people are looking for stuff to consume over the next couple of weeks, then keep an eye out for the work. Of Mr. William Nolan. Gentlemen, want to do picks? Indeed. Mm. Uh, I finished uh, Loki. Ah, yeah. I finished Loki. How did you? How did, did you? you feel but that? did you really finish Loki? Uh, well, you know that that that, that finale a little bit uh, uh more on the side of uh, welcome for welcome to season two than than uh, uh the resolution that we kind of got with WandaVision. I felt that WandaVision it, to stack them side by side is a little bit more of a complete series in that it it resolved all of its main things and and kind of gave you explanations and and let you cash out a lot of the emotional tension that was built up where this one uh left you with a lot of questions by the end of it um but uh by and large i will say that my uh my my i'm i'm enjoying marvel television except for falcon and winter soldier um <laughs> I, I i i very much liked loki i like when all, the last thing i'll say in comparison to to uh uh WandaVision is that man, it was really great in WandaVision where everything didn't wasn't like contractually mandated to have a kung fu fight for ten minutes in the middle of of every single episode. It was cool that they could just do stuff and there was tension and there was moments of conflict, but it didn't involve punching and kicking and shooting lasers. Um like I, I think that that those shows don't need it. And I think it's better without it. Uh, there's ways that you can even do physical conflict that isn't the same kind of, uh, you know, like uh, matrixy sort of uh, uh, action. That being said, I thought it was inventive. I, I, I liked the cast. I thought it was cool. And uh, I, I, I like that stuff that Marvel is doing, um, you know, especially in comparison to, you know, like Black Widow and stuff like that, which I thought was fine but ultimately a lot of stuff that we've kind of seen done better by marvel in other movies whereas like loki is like oh cool this is like you know this this uh uh weird doctor who rick and morty you know kind of thing in, in the marvel universe where i think that they do still have a lot of room to grow i i will say i i, I uh j jumping off of a, a criticism i think uh you you gave to loki a few weeks ago andrew um, which, which I think I've come to, uh, to agree with um, a little more given time is like, it's it's a great show. The script is really well written. They clearly have like really strong ideas for settings and locations and set pieces, and they really want to make the most out of every everything that I just said. Uh, and so, you know, uh, we I, we talked I talked about this on on the it's spoiler in time podcast last week. And this isn't a spoiler, but uh, a lot of episode four and episode five are kind of, kind of, kind of filler a little bit. Uh, a lot of episode four is all of the characters of the show learning the thing that the audience learned at the end of episode three. Um, uh, the, I mean, I, I won't even talk specifics about the finale, which is good. I think it's good and well. I think 
there's interesting ideas and information there, but a lot of the finale is an info dump in another cool location. But it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of telling and a lot less showing than uh, than you would think for something this expensive. <laughs> I and I I think everybody was associated with super talented, and I think that there are parts I like, but that was a thing where like spoil like that last episode. It was how many different camera shots can we do if somebody sits at a desk and explaining their master plan to us? Yeah. When when man, the answer's one, it was always just the same one, like straight on shot. Even like yeah. Even well, then they do they push in and put, and it was uh -huh. I and I I forgetting the shots. Like to me, it's like how about tell his that was my problem with you know the first the the first super soldier and all like how about tell us his show us his story is it's like right. show us the story. Because we meet a character like, oh, I've got a great backstory. But you know what? Instead of showing you that, I'm going to give you 40 minutes of people in cafeterias having a back and forth. And it just it, it frustrated me because it was just I wanted to see that story. And and like, and I, oh, budgets and stuff like CW manages to do with less, you know, and and I don't care if it's just like some rinky dinky, you know, sets and stuff to do this. It just it, and I think their I think their their mindset is, oh no, we everything has to look cinematic quality. So if yeah. we can't do that, then we're going to stick people in a desk, in a you know in a blue screen environment or the vessel or whatever, and do it. And I'm like, that doesn't feel like cinema to me. It, it feels like that. It feels like cheap TV. It feels like cheap TV with a ton of money thrown at post. Sure. Versus you know, I, I Doctor Who was great because. Well, we we gotta show this alien oh, alien civilization. I'm like, I only have eight bucks. We got a garbage dumpster out back too. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget that. And then, boom, you create like, yes, the car, the sets are shaking. Whatever. At least they tried to show you. And here, literally to the point of having people describe, well, and this happened, and then this happened. I'm like, that sounds way more interesting than like half the conversations I've sat through that could have been hand handled quicker while other things are going on. Yeah, so. you know, uh, uh. uh the monologue part of the monologue of the main character reminded me of one of my in in science fiction books one of my favorite opening chapters ever which is pandora's star where you have a very real world example of the first time this technology that revolutionizes the universe is used right and so the main mm -hmm. you know the, the baddie in in loki is going through like, oh, well, this is what I did, and this is what happened, and then all of a sudden, this big momentous moment happened. It reminded me of that moment of Pandora Star, except in Pandora Star, they found out the coolest way you could show it, <laughs> as opposed to just having somebody at a bar say, anyway, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and then this happened. It's like, no, they, they kind of showed it. So I, I, I do agree with you. The other thing that just bothered me about it was that it was like, like, look, I'm I'm enjoying my time here. I I I like it, but also, God, do I hate the 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 punt to the next season. Like, I I feel like maybe I'm just getting older and crankier, or I've seen enough of I've I've seen enough television to know that if you're punting to the next season without intro without settling the scores of the first season, then maybe you just don't know how to end things and you're just going to keep punting down the the road and eventually just give us crappier explanations to it because we're further away from when it mattered the most to us um i will say though i i i i like that better in loki where the end note on loki is cool we're gonna do it again we're gonna be back next season with more of the story where like wandavision is i guess kind of its own story but it still it still has all of the awkward awkward you know mcu setting up stuff that it has to work around and make sure we get these things in um where at least at least loki yeah it is setting up the next season um and but, also but also like like we don't get the we don't get any resolution on the judge lady we don't get we 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 barely get any resolution on the 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 the, the cop that that figured it out. We barely get any kind of uh, resolution on on Mobius. We don't know a lot. Of, we we know that Sylvie makes a big decision, but we don't know. I mean, I guess she's fine, right? And 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 I guess Loki is is fine. Although his he he does not get a moment where he himself decides 
what's happening. He just kind of gets thrust into it. Um, if anything, he's just kind of making a gut call based on this 20 minute monologue. And it's like, uh, uh, which by the way, ends up in a Kung Fu fight, uh, uh, which happens every episode. So it's like, um, my, my problem was it like, I don't know to me. Yes. You're setting up for other movies with, with WandaVision, but by the end of it, I felt very satisfied, especially looking back on it on like, okay, here were the characters. We know where all the characters went. We now know all the characters motivations. And we know that these characters are changed. Like in, in some ways, physically changed in some ways, mentally changed and now they have motivations to go further and it's like cool well that's the kind of stuff that i want to watch movies about mm. yeah i i thought they did a really good job of like making loki's change believable i thought that was well done I, you know i thought i think sylvie she the character i think she's great you know i think that having her bringing her to the marvel universe was good uh i just felt like they, they could have they could have given you a bigger sense of completion and then moved on. Um, and like, I, I, guess I saw Black Widow and there was like the opening, I'm like, I'm digging this. And then yada, yada, yada. We get to the spoiler alert. You get to the, you know, the, the credit finale. I mean, the season, the credit to whatever we're calling that and the post credit sequence. And I'm like, it's sort of, it kind of, kind of like, I'm like, I don't, there's a thing that happened at other studios, why other studios made really bad superhero movies, was because either you brought in nerds who didn't under, really understand storytelling, who made bad movies, they loved their characters, but they made bad movies, so they didn't, they couldn't tell a good story, you know, with, or you had people who are good storytellers, but could give an F about superheroes or characters like this, or, you know, or you get execs who just don't care, it's just a machine. Marvel felt more like that to me because like you get to the end of Black Widow and you have the scene and then all of a sudden Veep shows up and it's a joke. It's a ha ha joke. And then we get a setup for the most boring Avenger TV series coming up. And, you know, the premise is this premise. You're like, this is like a threes company premise where it's a misunderstanding kind of thing. And it's just it's like, I don't. I don't know that. They care the way they did before the way the tone shifts to this, I don't know that they treat it, you know, it doesn't, it feels like everything's a joke. It's like Stranger Things season three, you know, you're just like, nothing bad's gonna happen to anybody you like, it's nothing, you know, and so there's no, no stakes, no consequences. And so we're just gonna play everything for a laugh and a cameo. Uh, is, uh, is this too, is this too broad of a question, but is, is there any turning the ship around i mean they're only going to be making more marvel shows and movies i mean the i i agree that it has become more uh maybe a little soulless maybe or maybe a little more just on rails and does does that ever turn around with it being a, a money making operation does that ever well when the money is it you know we're it, when when things don't if things if if most people are happy then it's fine if most people are happy and they're making money then it's fine it doesn't matter what like we're we're like well the man babies don't get their comic book movie you know it doesn't who cares about like you know me or you or us you know about this mm. but if uh, you know and we won't know for a while because of hard to know with like pandemic post pandemic and etc yeah because uh, we like, also we also don't know what that was supposed to be because that was supposed to come out before um that that specific scene was supposed to come out before captain winter soldier right wasn't uh black widow was was slated Cap to come captain out. was supposed to be first oh it was it was supposed to be captain then wanda then loki and then black black widow in the middle of all of that oh i thought black widow was before i i don't Anyway, yeah. long story short, but, I yeah I I don't know what got changed. I I don't know what's what's different where where it was c compared to the original thing. I I found that that credit sequence to just basically be like what I had figured out a, a, a confirmation of what I had figured out within the first twenty minutes of the movie of like, oh, there's gonna be a new, a uh, blacker widow, and, and then look at her <laughs> and, go like and and, and, and she I was think, great. She was she's she's, she's fun. Great. Lawrence she's is awesome. Great in the movie, so I'm everybody, happy. Everybody, every and that's 
I'm happy she's going to yeah. be doing it, but it's like, I feel like that was just there to be like, yup, like get ready for her being the, the new black widow. I, 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 everybody is talented. The writers, they're, it's, it's an incredible po panel of you know, pool of talent. And I just, I think it's something about where the machine has become where I don't know if certain people have checked out is sort of my thing. And like, I, that's my thing. Like certain things are just, I think are playing really well, great cases, but from a story or like, like does this story, will, will the story earn the thing that's supposed to earn from a emotional point of view? And then, uh, you know, Black Widow, which they had a huge Sunday drop colossal sunday drop and they're the theater owners are blaming you know disney plus and availability but you had fast nine had a similar availability and and i only reason i went to see black widow to be honest was because i have the the amc movie pass it's the only reason i went to see it i had i had I like everybody in it but i watched the trailers and i'm like this looks like it looks like i used an ai to generate a action movie sequence trailer and that there was nothing that made me go. And, it, it, you know, it was just like, if I went something, like, eh, we're like, meh. And yeah, then an hour I mean, later, we're yeah. not talking. I, I don't know how it would have felt about it if I had not gotten it for free because Brett bought it and I have his <laughs> Disney Plus login. Yeah. But like, uh, I, yeah. And you got to watch it like a TV show, too. Remember, you got to watch it in your home like I a did. TV show. Yeah. Which... And I think we even paused it in the middle of it to get our food. <laughs> so it's like, uh, uh, yeah, it, look, it's it's a, it's a different experience, and 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 that certainly kind of plugs into it. Uh, I I I think um, from what has been written, and I've heard anecdotally, uh, Marvel is very 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 confident of what they can do late into the production process. Sometimes mm -hmm. even in the edit room of of what they can what they can get out of stuff. Uh, and, you know, Michael Waldron, who wrote uh, Loki and rewrote uh, Doctor Strange, is now working on Kevin Feige's Star Wars movie, which you wonder exactly how much Feige is working across the hall with Disney's other gigantic mega billion dollar property that uh, is not in the same financial position that Marvel is, or at least critically is, is, as had been but under more turmoil. So it's like if, if, if the machine is built to save things later and later and later in the process and the guy who has built that machine is maybe in the office a little less, you got to wonder if every once in a while some, some stuff hits the floor. Yeah, I, but also I'd say that like I, and I never thought I'd say this, I'm way more excited about the slate of DC movies than Marvel. Yeah, I mean, are they so? So we're talking about the new Batman. We're talking about yeah, the new Batman, the Suicide Squad. The new, keeps growing on me. You know, I like the new. Like I like the new trailer uh, more than I like yeah. the Harley Quinn centric one. Yeah, and I like that looks like oh, that looks like you know James Gunn being his most James Gunnist. You know, which I think could be fun. Uh, yeah, the Batman looks interesting to me. Like, I like Shazam. I'm looking forward to the, the oh, yeah, other the Shazam, Shazam movie. Yeah, I, Rock like, just wrapped on like... Black Adam. So, yeah, uh, Flash I, movie are, coming up. Interested. Aquaman sequel. Yeah, like that with Michael Keaton. You know, doing rising. Like, this is. This feels, you yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I, I. I I think uh, uh, if anything, uh, I would agree with you on that point, and I would I would say that that is a credit to DC, um, and you know for for Marvel, you know God, they're spinning so many plates too. There's just so much. There's there, there's so much stuff that that they are doing, and everything is interconnected in a way that I think DC right now has a, a little bit more of a of you know that they're kind of telling these 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 own sort of like separate track things um but uh, i i feel like the tv the marvel tv into the film it feels like it's a room run by writers and not storytellers a writer is give me two pages of this give me three pages of this and then like poof i'm a writer and i encounter that a lot in hollywood and stuff like this like oh i wrote a scene or this like okay build a structure build a really good structure yeah you know and and, you know, you're and I'm going to, you know, build a good structure and don't use save the cat as your reference for, you know, for how to do a 90s movie, you know, and it's just it's like 
and I see that a lot. Like people, they fill pages. Like, yeah, there's dialogue and stuff. Like, nothing's earned. There's not a big payoff. There's not this because that meta level of structure is just Absolutely. hard. It's a hard. It's just you've got to realize that's a thing. You can't just solve it by just writing, writing, writing more. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Loki, my pick. <laughs> Uh, I've I've got a pick. I'll I'll only talk about it briefly because uh, it took a while to kind of get here. But uh, we we are are continuing our rewatch or our watch of Hannibal for its spoiler in time this week, and uh, we just hit the halfway mark on season three, and uh, we're right about where the turn in the season happens. It's not like a big surprise. It's just like hey, now we're going in this direction. Uh, and it's a good, uh, interesting one. Um, you know, if, if you haven't been keeping up with our discussions about, about Hannibal, uh, season three has been kind of difficult because it slows down a lot and it does a lot of backtracking and, and relitigating of, of uh, events in the past um, where uh, now in the second half, you really feel like, oh, if... If someone had really wanted to, they had just built all of the structure to do a Hannibal show for a really long time. They fight, they they put all of the pieces just in the right place where if you wanted to, uh, if it was 2015 and Hannibal still had a chance, you could figure out a way to put three or four more seasons on the end of this thing. Um, they obviously did not. Uh, it ended after its third season, but... Uh, but I, but it's interesting, and I, I, I think I'm kind of back. I'm kind of back on Hannibal because it kind of focus a little more on, oh, let's try and catch some. Let's maybe let's catch. Can we catch some bad guys, please? Can we? Uh, can we try to catch some bad guys, please? Uh, so we get a little bit of that in season three. So I'm, I'm back on the Hannibal train, uh, and I'm watching that on Hulu now. Now it's on uh, Hulu in America. Andrew, you got a pick? I just gonna punt because i talk so much about the other ones so. <laughs> all righty there we go oh wait no, no i take it back uh i watched a movie on streaming that was really bad i mean not bad and but <laughs> just so meh so meh so meh okay that made me really want to go watch uh, edge of tomorrow so i went to go back and watch edge of tomorrow and edge of tomorrow is such a great if you want to watch a great movie uh. about fighting aliens and time travel Edge of Tomorrow is the movie to watch. Here Interesting, because I've I've certainly heard a lot of the opposite opinion about a uh, another movie that is not eight years old. That's, either. that's fine. <laughs> I have questions about like why is this? Why is this? Why is this? You mm -hmm. know, and then it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everybody can like what they like. It's fine. It's free. Right. Hey, it's a free movie for you. Yes. Yes. Love everybody oh, working on it. Oh, oh I get it. <laughs> All right, sorry, I didn't know. I, I was having a hard time placing what movie we were trashing. And, uh, it's just, there's, you right. don't need. It, 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 All right, we're just gonna have average people dressed however you are, and we're gonna go fight. Cool. Why? We're never going to address that. Because that is not an important detail at all. It doesn't. We're not even gonna train you. Why? Doesn't matter. We only have what? Amazon Prime money. We can't. <laughs> like, like, like that was in the per like, like, oh, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like I, this part. I said the chef's, you know, like, yeah, it's, I can't wait to see how this plays out. Oh no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with anything. And oh, you only get a four days of basic training. Why? Mm. I, I don't know, man. Because loose threads don't matter anymore. They're now they're just setups for sequels. And and then you watch Edge of Tomorrow, where the idea of part of the premise is they have these exosuits, and the idea is that you could be minimally trained and still use it and fight, and they're throwing tons of people into combat. I'm uh. like, yeah, I think somebody watched that movie and liked some ideas there. Read the read the book, read the manga, and anyhow. But yeah, it was just a weird like, oh, yeah, I, I can't wait to see how this. Oh, no, we're not. We're, we're not going to play <laughs> that. So there we go. Fun performances, though. All right. It's been weird. <laughs> oh, that was great. That was just like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm not doing anything. Oh, wait, I forgot. Here's an unsolicited oh. <laughs> drive by him <laughs> tomorrow. Or, uh, I, it, it, <laughs> I, it got to me. I'm like, I'm like. I'm, I'm like, uh, you know, like the whole like, yeah, they, we're just gonna pull you off the street, and put you into combat. I'm like, oh, this, can't wait to find out why. And they're like, oh, dressed however you are. Okay, cool. There's a, there's a really, I'm sure there's a cool concept in there somewhere mm -hmm. that just got left out of the production of the script or whatever. And you're left with like, 
Why do you have are they like this is a horrible plan? These are dumb people. I'm was that based aliens. on anything, or was was that an original script? Oh, yeah, I think it was based on Edge of Tomorrow and Grand well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, I'm pulling it up here on the on the internet. Uh, let's see. I'm not I'm not immediately seeing uh, uh, a novelization. Uh, development element well yeah i mean there was a there was based upon what was going to be aliens 3 aliens on earth i mean it was literally like if you just if you call them xenomorphs yeah um i see and i'm fine like i don't like you know like you know edge tomorrow it's like we're gonna take groundhog day we're gonna I'm like i borrow these things but man just make them work you know just well i mean what made edge of tomorrow so amazing was that a, it was a very competent movie that just when you had your your head wrapped around it, what what it did beyond Groundhog Day was the you didn't realize that the character you were following was now no longer the character you were following. Like the, like your yeah. your knowledge of uh, you know Tom Cruise surpassed your knowledge of the plot, and now you were following Tom Cruise his lead as opposed to empathizing with him now you're empathizing with emily blunt and it's like oh wow that's brilliant that's so good mm -hmm. uh, i and i mm -hmm. i bet i bet if i read the screenplay it'd probably be really clever and good stuff like i think so much of it is just kind of the machine and what happens like i've seen that happen with my stuff and people oh we those executives suggested this i'm like that's an idiotic idea like yeah. well they know i'm like no they don't i'm gonna Do show they? you their slate yeah, I'm going to show you their slate, and you tell me that they're doing better than a chimpanzee throwing darts, you know? Yeah. Um, I need... Uh, I'll get uh, back in a second. Yeah, if, 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 if anybody needs a break, now is the time to do that. Uh, hey, Justin. Hey, man. Hello. What's up, fam? How's it going, buddy? I have been... Um, I'm still enthralled in um, my exponential idol game on my phone. Uh-huh. Um... I'm at the point now where, so as you play with these, I don't know if you, do you, do you play many of these idle time management games? No, I play two games on my phone, Hearthstone and now Mario Kart. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mostly when I'm on edibles. <laughs> I find Mario Kart very pleasing when I'm <laughs> vegging out outside. I just, yeah, I, I, uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's, it's just, just rudimentary enough for me to just wax kids who are getting their parents ipads like i just dominate them mm. uh so so it's basically like a clicker game where you don't but it's it's like a clicker game but it's the part of the clicker game where you don't even have to click um i'm so far in now that so i don't even know what the hell this genre is so like uh did you ever play cookie clicker no you know or uh the paper clips game universal paper clips no. none of those games no. so uh hmm oh that's gonna be very weird to describe a genre i think wait so uh, i think you've described it before but it's like kind of like a a, a a buy for one sell for two kind of thing so you're like it's like partly math basically yeah uh, so uh um, the idea being uh uh you want to continue accelerating your growth because uh a, the, how well you're doing is gauged logarithmically. Okay. It's gauged by how many digits the number that you have is, not really how much the number is. Got gotcha. you. Um, and so you ha you kind of have to keep uh, upping your acceleration. So you're constantly, uh, uh, first you're manually buying, and then you're automatically buying upgrades to different parts of the formula, the math formula mm -hmm. in this game. Um, and now it's at the point, I'm so far in where um, instead of even focusing on the regular game, because there's like the regular game where you you've got a formula and you're you're upgrading variables. Yeah. There's like another idle game inside of it, and the better that that does, the better that that affects another variable. Gotcha. And as you as so you're like stacking all these different things on top of each other. Um, and so now I'm at a point where I'm like having to do these little mini these mini clicker games just to continue making progress in the real game. Gotcha. Um, which is just strange. It's very, it's, it's, it's a very strange feedback loop because it's, it is literally a Skinner box. It's just numbers go up 
when I click the thing. Yeah. Sometimes I tell it to click things automatically. Sometimes I don't. Um, and it's been it's enthralling. It's the best piece of media from 2021, I think. Damn. Oh. All right. Well, here, I'm going to use the bathroom. All right. Here. Hello, Andrew. Oh, I don't think you unmuted yourself. Yes. There he is. So, and another thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I want to like everything. Like, did you see Tomorrow War? I have not seen it. There's like things like that in the beginning feel like setups for like really cool revelations and twists, and you realize they're just not. It just, mm -hmm. you know. Do you, no. I, I, and I. Uh -huh. Well, I, I kind of joked, but do you, do you think that those are just threads for a sequel or a possible franchise? Or do you think that that just speaks to the disposability of, <laughs> of, of, we just need to finish this movie. Can you just finish this movie and put it out? It, it It's hard to know. I it, I think that sometimes you might have an early version of the screenplay might have set up a lot more and then the writer had to take stuff out or they had to take things, remove it to simplify it. Mm. But that kind of gets left in and most people don't really notice it unless the payoff. Putting too much in, stuff in to set up for sequels really kind of bad writing, in my opinion, because that's why almost every attempt that studios have made to create a new trilogy, a new franchise, mm. you know, out now, like to really try to create a new franchise is sort of failed and you know marvel worked because iron man is a self-contained movie and then you get nick fury shows up and says hey i'm hiring you right. you know these things work because the movie is complete it's like like the first star wars film okay biggest franchise up until a point ever worked because that was a complete story death star got destroyed if there was no sequels you could walk away out of star wars going well yeah that was the d-day that was the battle that won Right. and you're fine when they knew they were doing a sequel lucas is like well, let's make it bigger and better like oh no just that that wasn't even it and now we've got the empire strikes back and then he needed okay i need to do a third one well we'll do the d-day thing we did from the first one and now that's like, <laughs> oh, okay yeah. um but it's it's that's when you set out to say oh we're gonna do this and People are like, oh, we're, we're going like, to... You see studios fall, it's like, oh, we're launching this thing and we set this thing up for in the sequels and stuff. It's like, man, you, you've only got two hours to tell this story. And I need to get a really complete story and walk away and feel like I've had... A, and that was DC messed that up a lot because DC would do these really early, you know, the, the reboots, you know, post-Nolan stuff was just these, a lot of these really incomplete, like, oh, wait, wait until the next one. Well, give me a good one now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah it's strange i i think i think i think i don't know i, I don't know how much is of of the, the movies and tv that are coming out of streaming are if the weird decisions from them are just because they're still inexperienced they're somehow still inexperienced in the machine or maybe it's a zero-sum game and these are this is just the level of of of, of acceptable media not that it's unacceptable but we're here we're i mean we're here criticizing it anyway well, i so. mean look television's hard and and even television without the deadline that used to define television you know it used to be like you know make 24 episodes and uh it happens every year and it doesn't matter whether or not your star breaks his leg where we're going to get these 24 episodes out and you're gonna have to write around a bunch of stuff and and just make it go even in the era like you know post hbo when it was like all right at the height of it it's 13 episodes or whatever whenever you want david chase just keep, keep can you give us another season of the sopranos uh even then the quality is is variable you know there, there's a lot of reasons why these things get good and 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 get bad you know i think that there's we have still yet to do the real full autopsy on like what happened with game of thrones <laughs> like how does game of thrones go from just this iconic crossover like modern lord of the rings to something that like 
you know, you didn't really hear a lot of people doing the big rewatch over the pandemic when everybody was rewatching, like, right. everything. Everything was getting a second look. Like, And clearly they had big, they, they are still continuing to bet big on that because of all of the spinoffs that they're, they're still developing, which, which it only speaks to how long they've been invested in Game of Thrones being the biggest thing with flying colors from the end of the series and on, right? That clearly must have been the goal, if only because they're executing on this huge like development deal. I think with Game of Thrones, what happened is Benioff and Weiss worked their asses off, worked their asses off, and they put together an incredible group of talent, the number of directors that are going on to do features. And then what, what happens to showrunners is you get a showrunner that gets a shot at something and they do an amazing job, you know, first two seasons, three seasons, then Hollywood starts come calling. Yeah. And Hollywood starts this, and then next thing you know, you're not reporting to the production office, you're reporting to your own, your, your, your production company that's producing all these different stuff and your day's not spent looking over that show. It's spent working on five different things and pitch meetings and stuff. And then you're not, you don't have that. And, and it's kind of like, that's the reward. The reward for that, that tremendous crazy energy is that you're going to get all these offers to do a bunch of different stuff. And that's where I tell people like, Oh, you know, so-and-so just got attached to this. I'm like, they're attached to eight things. Yeah. This isn't good. You, you're, you're getting one eighth of this person. I'm like, Oh no, no. I'm like, watch what happens. I'm like, Oh yeah, no, we had a good script. We brought someone else to punch it up. And it's I'm like, yeah, like this is, this is what happens because you picked, you picked this person at the wrong time. you, you waited for somebody else to bet big on them and then become a success. Now you only get a fraction of that person. I mean, yeah, or you're getting the 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 thing that they couldn't sell other places, uh, or as mm -hmm. we call the Queeby. <laughs> like, yeah, yep. big roster of names. Oh my god, all the names, all the names, and it's like, yeah, here's an idea that's been kicking around for eight years. We couldn't sell to anybody, and now we're gonna get top dollar out of out of this, you know, a uh, bonfire of cash, but. <sighs> anyway, uh, uh, I, I yeah. still think there's like there's like a documentary or a movie or something like that. Like considering that like still one of the busiest subreddits on 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 Reddit is just people continually bitching about the final few seasons of Game of Thrones. There is still this this question, this unresolved thing of, and also I think some of those actors are ready to like rip on their experience now as they've kind of gotten further away from it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you guys want to do after things? Yeah. Cool. Do we have a topic? Uh, hmm. Do we have a topic? Uh, we don't have an email. Um, I mean, we could, we could talk about great night a little bit or sure. Love to. That sounds yeah. awesome. Okay. You can do that. Cool. All right, then uh, I'll count you in for after things, Andrew. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Adrian Mean, joined by Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hola. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. So uh, I know nothing. I know nothing <laughs> about this thing called great night yes what mm -hmm. is great night why is he so great what deeds has he done he is a good goodly a goodly night um <laughs> so great night is the most recent incarnation of uh what was once bb live show which begat nsfw show which begat night attack and now begats great night it is uh a a, a reconstitution that happens because I am now in Austin, and so the the show was going to change, uh, you know, significantly one way or another with Brian and I in the same room, uh, and I think this was an opportunity for us to kind of a bring back a lot of things that uh, uh did not exist in a version of the. I mean, Night Attack was made at a point where uh. Brian and I were both just in our own spare rooms, right? And then eventually it kind of moves into the studio, but we had not really utilized this studio aside from getting it out of Brian's house. Uh, 
at least in terms of the space uh, 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 available. And so I think Great Night was was the the excuse to do that and and to fold in a couple a couple other things and just kind of make it seem like it's a bit of a a bigger experience and uh and and bryce uh was and is a huge 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 part of figuring out uh how to take all that ambition and actually (laughs) make it a thing that works every every tuesday Mm. yeah we it, it was it was strange because we we both wanted to change the show and keep the show similar uh or it was is a balancing act between how do we how do we take the things that we do now and and build on top of them enhance them um while taking maybe taking a look at other things um that either we just hadn't really reconsidered in a long time or hadn't given much attention to to tweaking um and 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 then yeah just the fact that Justin and Brian will always be in the same space now changes Changes some stuff, I think, logistically in terms of like the visual look of the show and the way that we structure, say, the the you know the on screen presentation, the actual program feed. Um, that gets a lot easier when just it's it's the two of them in the same space. And um, one of the, one of the big changes is um, kind of in lieu of uh, the way that we've been doing podcasts on Twitch now. Um, which uh, for any of our video or live viewers uh, is a lot like what you're looking at right now, which is, you know, uh, three, um, three different video um, uh, sources kind of cropped in as like a, like, like a virtual round table Um, that, that all uh, is a lot easier when it's just, here's, here's everybody on a, on a big wide shot in the same space uh, and here's like a cutaway shot that is a little, a little a little closer, which is one of the other big big changes is like in lieu of have instead of having two solo shots, kind of like how we have it here, where I've got a camera and Justin's got a camera, um, we are actually uh, kind of almost treating it a little like some of the YouTube shoots that we do. Of like yeah. we've got a wide master shot that is trying to capture everyone and everything, and then we have Brett Weaver who. Um, is kind of a new a new voice on the show um uh, actually running a second camera yeah to to get pickup shots to get uh close-ups so that there's still visual you know there's still visual interest there's still um movement and changement and excitement um and and also um doesn't completely rip up everything that we've done you know both in this space the past few years and back in in brian's bedroom yeah question go ahead uh are are you i know you like the standing energy Mm -hmm. you guys thought about like a like a table like a booth kind of like a panel like a panel show you know we we initially wanted it to be a bar and right. we would kind of be sitting like at a mm. bar and we would like build a bar set and but that, not not a desk pro- not a desk proper I no that is that was not i think mm, we wound like, up settling on the idea of the standing thing because we wanted it to feel like a live show we wanted it like to like an open mic night on a monday night <laughs> at a rat skeller yeah, like our live show. Yeah, like exactly. our live show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and and, but I understand where where that uh, kind of reaction is coming from, Andrew. And I, we've seen we've seen some people kind of respond. I, to, I'm gonna be. I, yeah. I'm gonna be open. I'm honest. I looked at this and I thought this was a dress rehearsal for something. I did. I've seen the clips. Like, oh, cool. I can't wait to see the show. I'm like, oh, this <laughs> is okay. Cool. And again, I'm purely visual. That's all. So I'm an idiot. And so I'm just gonna say that right there. Well, and and you know the visual is something that has changed that did change a lot with, uh, with with kind of keeping this aesthetic of like here's a big blue you know curtain and we've got a, uh, a we've got a, a, a spotlight with a, a big uh, kind of gobo light stencil with the with the big diamond club diamond so. It, it does. That looks fantastic. Yeah. That looks yeah. fantastic. Exactly. It, like like an open mic night on Monday, you know, like like <laughs> well, the, the the pinnacle of visual excellence. But but 
Uh, no, but I mean the background that like looks good. I, I'm I was just because I was looking at the I was looking at the mics because the mics are like the one of the cantilever mics, and I'm like, oh, this yeah. looks like the background looks great. I guess they're, they're dressed they're doing a dress for something because the background it looked very that part looked really well produced. Yeah. I, I think when I'm it, sorry. when I'm it came to shut the, up. no stop stop <laughs> when it came to like that aesthetic decision and I think that guys we may have talked about it briefly on the show but like once uh, the the thing that we hooked into was okay well what we're trying to capture is the energy from the live night attack experience from night attack yeah when we do when we are out again everybody in the same place and. Because it, because uh, it up up till now was the only real reference that we had of. You know, the one thing that was always true on a live show is that Brian and I are both there, right? There's never been a live show where I'm calling in on on Skype and, and Brian is there or vice versa. So, right. like, that was a thing that the audience already knew. Um, so it's like, okay, what if we got live show energy and good sound, which is always <laughs> the reason why people normally hate live shows is that, you know, or of the live versions of their favorite live podcast podcasts. is because the sound is usually awful and the hosts are kind of distracted and there's a lot of visual things happening and they're not used to doing it. So it's like, if we could keep that in mind and have that live, you know, I, I, I do think that there is an element of, uh, I want to say shabbiness in terms of like the, the, the decorum of a talk show podcast, because what we're doing visually is not something that normally has that kind of visual aesthetic unless you look way back into kind of television history and and you look at talk shows that were or panel shows that were um very loose in the like 50s and 60s and stuff like that back when they were smoking on set and stuff uh that was a, a lot more kind of free flowing and we sort of have that energy being a talk show podcast but it is it's it, it is an interesting thing to try to capture uh, in in a way that that demonstrates uh, that it is both professional and loose, right? That we have the ability to kind of go and do uh, whatever we want, but but this is uh, also you know just a a work in progress. Like the whole the whole uh, 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 situation is something where uh, you know we are uh, we 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 are very much an audio podcast crew that also does youtube stuff that is now you know marrying the, the the two of them in a in a live format and and i think where we've gone over the last three weeks has been really encouraging i think we're we're, we're going to continue to see that yeah that i i have been the, the things that have excited me the most are the way that in these we've done about three episodes already um the things that have been most exciting are when we've done done things that either wouldn't uh, we wouldn't have space for in Night Attack, um, or um, uh, for, for for the parts where like like our our uh, our the first segment the a the a block of of Great Night I love a lot because instead of the, uh, the three of us showing up on Tuesday and hoping there's enough stories or ideas between the three of us that. We can fill out that block where instead, no, we sit, we, you know, we get together ahead of time and say, these are the stories. And now, and now it's not fishing and hoping we get enough yeah. to eat for that segment. It's let's, let's really go. It's like the only the best parts. We don't need to go over long on something if it doesn't need it. Like we did was that was the, the fast so, and furious so thing just, this week? Y no, two weeks ago. So just, just to set up for anybody who's never listened to the uh, a block of, of, uh, or listen to Night Attack at all. Um, the the first act used to just be us sitting down and BSing, and and hopefully we'd find a runner and we would keep going from there. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 big revolutionary concept that we have shown here uh, is oh, what if we all just kind of gathered before the show and we slotted in just five topics? Some of them can be news stories or memes from the web. Some can be personal stories, like blah, blah, blah. We can determine how secret we need to be on it. And that gives us two things. Number one, we never have to say, to me, the dreaded, the, 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 the dreaded words that I, I don't know whether or not it's, it bothers other people as much as it bothered me, is just like, so what are you up to? What's going on with you? Like, I just, mm -hmm. I hate 
hate, hate those words. And that entire first segment was designed to basically have us never say that. And whenever we get to a point that the, 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 the story or the meme is kind of done, we've got to punch out by going to the next topic. We're always kind of building and cascading. And now, uh, you know, we've got, uh, 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 we've gotten used to doing it to the point where, uh, we've, uh, you know, like now a thing will happen and I'm just like, Oh, there we go. That's, mm -hmm. that's for the a block. Let's make sure that we, 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 we put that in. Yeah. Including me just, uh, uh, <laughs> making sure that Bryce tweets get on the air. Like we're watching in this, in this clip. Uh, I'm glad that they're getting some air oh, time. My mother. Oh, my mother. Uh, yeah. It, uh, go ahead. Andrew. I mean, it, it is. And I am, I am, and despite my, my production designer uh, <laughs> speaking, like I am, I am excited about this because like looking at where podcasts have grown and live shows and all this sort of stuff. And, and it's all legit. Nothing's nothing. Nothing's indie anymore. Everything and it can be anything. And then you guys taking everything you've learned and just drawing a circle around it and going, this is what we do really well. It doesn't matter whatever people think the zeitgeist is or what you're supposed to be doing. We're just going to take the thing we're really good at and build a show around that and not try to be something else that makes sense yeah yeah it, it is it is hard to try to also keep an eye on the different formats that we're putting it out in like because it is most popular as a podcast it is most uh, uh devoutly consumed by the hardest core audience as a live stream and there is an obvious room for growth for it on youtube as something a little bit more produced for youtube because of brian's uh you know uh, success there so it's like uh, we've we've tried to to be mindful of watching it from all these angles and being able to serve these masters with without ruining the other side of it, and that's like an ongoing conversation. But the thing that's most exciting for me about it is, uh, you know, it it just feels exciting. It feels exciting to build stuff. It feels exciting to uh, improve stuff. It feels inciting, exciting to sit down every week and say, "Hey, what can we, what can we do to change and make it better?" Uh, because it does feel electric in the moment, and I think everybody wants to maintain that and gin that up and 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 keep it going and get it going bigger. Uh, because I think that's uh uh I don't know I just I like uh I like being able to work on this in 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 a way that we're we're kind of breaking new ground and doing different different stuff because I mean hell been doing that podcast for a long time you know there's yeah. the uh uh yeah it's it's felt it's felt good for it to feel different yeah I'm sorry I'm a little distracted why. Uh, you know, it's just when you have your book go up in a billboard in New York City, the next hey! thing you know. Oh, wow. hey, did you send you know, Bryce a the... picture? Oh, I guess I could. You should probably uh, send Bryce I did, a picture. I, I had my agent like in the middle of a podcast, like, hey, uh, she's trying to get hold of me. She's like, oh, have you like, we got to talk. We got to talk. And I'm like, I'm like, have you ah! talked to, you know. Look at that. Yeah, Look uh, at that, Penn son Station. bitch. Penn Station. Penn yeah. Station. Discover uh, Sunner Reads, like, Andrew Maine, Black Coral. Yeah, I, I'm like, Ooh. she's like, we got, I'm like, I'm like, have, we, have they talked to you? I'm like, no, no. And then I got the email in the middle of it, like, hey, here's a photo of your book up on our billboard, you know, as part of the Amazon promotion. So the digital billboard, but still, it's a uh, billboard. It's a billboard. I don't care. I don't care. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Man, so now you and Auntie Donna have had billboards in New York City. Like now, this is gonna be the new TV show thing. All my friends are gonna have TV show now. I gotta figure out a thing where where I get a billboard in in New York City. This is this is amazing. That's so that's ah, oh, dude, that's so rad. And I love yeah, that it's so. I love that it's 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 black coral. It's it's uh, yeah, uh, you know, a, a thing that's it's a little newer. That's that's amazing. But God, I'm so proud of you, man. That's great. Yeah, I feel very, very, very lucky. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, sorry for the distraction. Yeah, that's a, that's a, you don't, yeah, you know, like as a writer, you sit out there and you're, you're, you're a lonely little 
office with Taco Bell wrappers sitting in the wastebasket, <laughs> hoping somebody will read your book. And then, you know, when you get, you know, the really cool moments where all of a sudden, yes, I think they should be a great night billboard. <laughs> uh, there should be a Patreon level to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that I, I, it should mm. just be the big quote. I thought they were shooting the rehearsal. <laughs> Andrew, May. I thought this was a dress. <laughs> <laughs> I stand by it. I stand by it. Oh, we know. I, 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 we know. I, and no, no one's no, no one's no one's no one's uh no one's doubting your sincerity. I know. I, I see this looks well. <laughs> is it is it is it because they're wearing casual clothes? Is it just because it's, they're sh you know shirt shorts and pants? Uh I mean it's how deep down this well do you want to go, <laughs> Bryce? Yeah, maybe I, 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 I could. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just not after things. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying, down, look, I like, trust me. I, I know what happens when Andrew's unvarnished <laughs> opinion comes out. So I just want you to know, Bryce. What what happens, Justin? Uh, it all comes out, <laughs> and it will it no. will be there because he wants to make things better, and 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 he is honestly doing it. So I just and I just want to let Bryce also, know. It may be, it may be irrelevant because a lot of it, I don't know your, your breakdown is, it may be irrelevant. I just, my, my life has been around like, how do I take, and your guys is really good stuff. My life is mostly, how do I take something that I did that's half-assed and make it look on the surface, like really slick and really like, like, oh, and get people invested in it. And they're like, well, this is kind of half-assed, but since we're stuck with you now, we got to make this thing work. <laughs> um, uh, I would, I would. And again, I think you're gonna do fine for what you want to do. You know, I, I, I think, I think, um, I think it's fine. It's good. <laughs> it's good. A great night. How would you? How would well, you direct it? Fine. How would you direct? Maybe that's maybe would, that's. It depends upon say. the goal. If my goal was to say, "Hey, it depends what you want to do with it." Like if 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 I, if, if I, my goal was to say, "Let's do this," I want to get sponsors to throw a lot more money at this. Okay. Then I would say, okay, I got to step up because that you you when you guys do production value, you guys do great. When your attention's on a thing, it's great. I would say if my goal is to get sponsored money at this, or I want Netflix, or I want some streaming service to at least flirt with us and talk to us about this, I'd say, okay, what are they going to fixate on? You know, and and for them, if it's TV production, it's like, okay, what can you do that keeps the same energy but makes it look like, you know, not like if be three casually dressed guys is fine, but it's like, could you? is there a way like the bar set like you mentioned i'm like oh that's really cool because like that feels neat you know that feels like a cool kind of setup or something like this mm -hmm. now we're watching what about brian snorting beer yeah is brian snorting yeah. beer through a uh, very dirty very old dollar bill uh, <laughs> uh are there any I, you guys you know, know your content i don't i'm not <laughs> i don't need comments on that i'm just saying yeah. as a from a producer uh you know, just a guy who's had a TV show or two. Um, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. like, what mm -hmm. what would you do? What would it do? And I'd say, like, if you think about think about like what like look at like Norm Macdonald show, look at some of these other shows, like David Spade show. What do they go in there? How do they create? They all try to create their different environments. Norm Macdonald used kind of the news desk sort of thing, and then he puts his sidekick off on a lower desk. Yeah. Uh, Spade did the casual sitting down. You get other shows where they use the people sitting at a thing. There's something about making that space a physical space, not just microphones. The idea is like bar stools or something or something. So the space represents something sure. other than just a backdrop and an empty stage. That's yeah. all. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's, that's been on the list in terms of, I believe of, it. of more physical set tough stuff. Um, and, and that, that becomes a thing where, you know, a, we've, been in this mode of can can we can can the train start can the train run on the tracks i, uh, I don't but, think there's a single thing but, i've suggested yeah. you guys haven't considered yeah uh, yeah and, and that and that's all uh, uh, i i mean to get across is yeah. we, we we've considered yeah. it a we are it is being considered a lot still it's 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 uh it's it's just a matter of what is the right one and um uh and and getting getting the right piece of pieces of furniture um but at, at at the same time, like the 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 uh, the the things that we have been working through, especially as we've had these first three episodes come out, has been how like literally, do we have enough equipment to 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 furnish the space? Because we have both this new set uh, that we're in, but we also have 
um, our a second a secondary set for the pre-show for the first hour of the stream, um, which needed to be kit out kit out on its own, um, and so we're 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 still kind of in in working through that just the technicals phase. We're still just need to make sure we've got. Dude, like literally, do no, we Bryce, have enough that's mics? That's unacceptable. And... <laughs> it's un it, should, it should it should be perfect the first time I see this. And exactly. I should not have no notes. Right. You, but you you feel Bryce. And it's you, Bryce. I blame you. Yeah, Bryce, and, and I, the talent. And we tried very hard, and this was all we were able to get, which is the dollar bill uh, starting. <laughs> I'm excited about this. <laughs> Again, this, these were after things comments, not weird things comments. Uh, totally, totally, yes, and yes. it's and it's good and it's good to get that. I mean, we we and that'll that'll be sure to be mentioned in Bryce's diary. Uh, <laughs> oh, come uh, on, these are after things comments. Uh, but um, but but yeah, it's um, it's 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 a it's a it's a really cool journey because it is. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm just repeating myself now, but we're we're taking we're taking new uh, we're taking a new a new look at everything well and that's i mean to to go back to the idea of uh uh the fact that this had been a very hardened process for a long time breaking it open and putting things in different places and and trying different things is uh that's that's thrilling to me like uh, up to and including the physical look and the idea of like okay well should can we lighting wise make it feel different or close cropping on, on the initial camera stuff? Can we make the first act feel different than the second act? Can we make the uh, uh, guests that come in feel different than Brian and I, or should we be in a certain space? Like that's, that's like, we're stuff that we're all kind of figuring out because um, unfortunately that also has to uh, exist in the same process as us making sure that the podcast doesn't suck because again the vast majority of the people that that consume it consume it via podcast and so mm -hmm. uh that's it's irrelevant whatever it looks like agreed yeah that's 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 well but but beyond whether or not it's irrelevant of what it looks like it it's like anytime you change anything on a podcast you're you, you know you better hope that it's an improvement to people or they are happy to see it change because Every people will bitch no matter what, anytime anything changes, and you just hope that it ends with, well, I still miss blank, but I also like the replacement blank, right? Right. Um, like you, like you hope that that's the case, and so for us, I think probably for the first, I mean, since we've since we flipped it, that's been my primary focus is like let's make sure that this podcast is still good, and that's another thing that we changed was that prior on Patreon, now we're getting into some business stuff, yeah. prior on Patreon, our hook for Night Attack was become a patron and you'll get the pre-show and the post-show before everything else comes out uh, or before anybody else will get it. So the pre-show and the post-show were delayed on the free feed. They were uh, coming out at the same time on the Patreon feed, which, you know, I, I found a, a little, you know, confusing but it worked and that was kind of the 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 uh, modus operandi of the show was that people liked it it was it was working it was fine that's a, that's what it was we kept doing it but now that we had an opportunity to change uh and that's another thing that we could probably spend some time on uh, at, at, at another time but it's like i'm a big believer in if you're making a change with something like you know a, a new host somebody's leaving somebody's showing up like you're you're getting new equipment you're you're bringing on a, another guest host something like that that's the time where you can slip in a lot of things that kind of change especially when it's good news that something's happening you can do a, a bunch of stuff and so on the patreon now we for free give away pre-show show post-show post -show on the regular rss feed it's up now hours after it comes out and so the patreon is a totally another separate show that comes out um, on Thursday. So now you just get a big, you get, you know, four hours worth of stuff on Wednesday, another show that goes anywhere between a half hour and an hour on uh, Thursday for the Patreon money. Uh, and, and that's, that's boosted the Patreon. It's made, uh, uh, I think uh, people are, are happy about it. And it also makes, the Tuesday show 
a more complete thing for people who want to just get on board. And, and that, that puts us into a, a category of podcasts that are a little bit more long form in that, you know, if you are into Night Attack or you're in a great night, if you were into Night Attack, uh, you're getting more of it with Great Night. Right. And uh, you're getting three hours and change of it for your morning commute on Wednesday morning, which uh, I think is is way better of an experience than I, I'm listening to the main show, but then two days later I get the, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 in general, kind of, I've, I've lost my, uh, I've lost some of my, my, my strategic belief in kind of time delayed stuff. I, I tend to, I tend to think uh, exclusivity is just kind of the, the way to go in terms of getting people over a paywall. And and I think when we were considering that change, you know, what 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 do we do with the pre-show and the after show? Um I think I think what made it easiest to do this paradigm that we've settled on, the you know, the Tuesday show is just free and public for everyone from the first minute that it's available. Um I, I think I think it became easiest to to go along with that once we felt confident that we would be we would be able to do a bonus show i mean i think that had always been uh uh that well maybe not always but i think that had been something you at any podcast kind of of our size you would consider is how do we how do we break through to the next level of 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 customer attraction how do we get listeners more interested in a patreon and it would be more content, exclusive content, producing just whole cloth new um, pictures of your feet. <laughs> well, I did not know you had logged into my Patreon. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to um, and I so mean, Brian does wear sandals a lot. Like that, that is that is a barrier that he has uh, uh, that he has crossed. That I have, I have, I have not. Nor do I have interest in in, in crossing into uh, um, you know shorts and sandals. Uh, but, but I, I think once we realized, okay, no, it'll be, it'll be easier for us to just get together, record something at one extra thing a week yeah with Justin being in town that, I don't know, I feel like it made the pitch on, on everything so much easier. You're going to get all of the stuff yeah. you were getting last week, but now it's easier, freer, sooner. And then there's another new thing. If you want, if that. you would like it, then here it is, and it's a it's a pretty friendly price point on uh, uh, the, the the Patreon. Uh, right. So, what I, is that I, Patreon again? Uh, Patreon.com slash Great Night, of course, is the uh, the URL to get you there. Indeed, and um, I yeah, I'm I'm excited about it. I I it, it's 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 been it's been a lot of fun, and it's been good seeing the reactions to big changes and little. Right, we we changed the recording time we yeah we're, we're doing the stream two Another hours one earlier those little changes you want to slip in when everybody's happy that i'm here <laughs> also i'm gonna keep that west coast start time and we're just importing that some bitch whole cloth but but also it was a good time to do it i mean we started late on tuesdays we go even later and it's it is difficult you know for uh it, it is a little tougher time now for folks on the west coast because we're starting the stream at 4 p.m. Pacific. Yep. yep. Um, but it's one it's it's one of those things like we mentioned or when you mentioned earlier about change, you kind of just have to hope more people appreciate it than are turned off by it or you know become unable to watch the show because of it. But yeah. it's it's a thing where like that's a change that's a change for us. Like it is so much easier for me to get out of here at 10 o'clock instead of midnight. I go to sleep at 10, man. I, I, I was, I wouldn't be able to start that show at nine. Like, like, uh, uh-uh, uh, sorry, dude. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make a lot of stuff. I need, and, and I, I'm on, I'm on a fairly tight schedule when it comes to, uh, you know, sleeping and waking up. So th- this is just, uh, uh, I think it, there's other things that you know, kind of behind the scenes, kind of made that a little bit more of an easier decision to make. But I'm, uh, uh, I, I think the the give back on that is also like, all right, well, before the 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 podcast was kind of hitting the feeds on like Thursday, you know, um, and well, on on the free feed, so it's like we do it on a Tuesday night. It would hit sometime during Thursday, maybe sometimes. Wednesday, maybe Thursday, maybe whenever. Yeah, yeah, it would just kind of pop out. 
and and that's hard to develop a a, a routine for people of like oh like, oh cool it's Wednesday that means I get to listen to this on my drive in like there's those relationships that you make with people that I think are really really important and now it's like yes it is earlier so you might not be able to watch it live at the same time but hours after we're done you're going to be able to get the whole podcast and it's going right. to be up on YouTube and you can watch it really really easy. Do yeah. you go to bed at 10? <laughs> I, oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's I can what call I got. my parents at like 11 o'clock at night and they're up. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm, uh, I don't know when I started. I, that was the pandemic thing. I was just like, uh, uh, I, I tried to schedule out my entire day and 10 is, 10 is when I'm in bed, baby. Sleep. Like a sleep up. at 10 or like two hours on Netflix and. No, like uh, we're we don't have a, a TV in our room. Like so, when it's when what? we're when we're in the room, yeah, uh, that's not my decision. I would prefer a television in the room. <laughs> Ashley, Ashley is annoyed because I like to sleep with the television on, <laughs> and can't. so she just doesn't want to even have it in there. But uh, no, ten o'clock, and then I'm up at five fifty-five. Uh, man, Lord. you can't you can't be having a TV in the bedroom. You you just can't. It's yeah, tough. You can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I'm with Andrew. I, I you will not. You, I, I I I would prefer to have a television. I want I want a big ass television in the room. I got I a 75 a... inch TV, yeah. two feet, three feet from the edge of my bed. And it's yeah. awesome. Wow. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a pretty big TV. A... I've seen your bedroom. <laughs> There's not not a lot of distance from the foot of the bed to the edge of the wall. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that was a thing. Maybe this is like a secret. A secret life hack that I've got. Like, but once I when I moved out here to Austin, yeah, uh, no TV in my bedroom, no lights, no blinking LEDs in my bedroom. So I've uh, got I've got some I've got a couple of lights in so, there, but but like no TV. I don't I like I don't even keep my alarm clock that I had growing up. It's like, don't give me lights. Let's it's dark. So this is the room to sleep. I only watch TV when it's the end of the day for me. When I'm like, I'm done, work is done, whatever. So, and that's the only time I go into my bedroom. You know, it's like, all right, day's done. Now you can relax and yeah. do whatever you want. Sleep, watch TV, whatever. Because mm. otherwise, like we have a TV in the living room. I never watch that. Like I don't watch TV during the day. You know, I almost never, you know, like, but I'm just, because of like my own habits of trying to get stuff done. I'm like, yeah. no, you're going to watch TV when it's time for bed and you're, you want to chill out. So, mm. I think for for me, uh, the reason I did that uh, or have that soft policy is because because I would watch a lot of TV at night and I would mm -hmm. I and I would watch until I fell asleep and it paused itself and then eventually it turned off and the TV turned off um, and I feel like I I actually ended up having less control over when I ended up staying up later until my my body fell until i i i fell asleep until versus like no it's bedtime i'm an adult uh, uh think lane go to bed <laughs> yeah but i i know, I know it, it's it's helpful for people to have visual you know have visual shows on or, or what have you um but just i did it for forever me. because i heard an interview with puff daddy once and he said that uh he always slept with the television on because he felt like he was getting ideas while he was sleeping <laughs> uh and that he uh uh he knew he was right because he had he woke up in the middle of the night and it was a greatest hits rock compilation <laughs> and it was uh uh that led zeppelin song that he used for the godzilla uh uh song uh was a cashmere and uh uh he like heard it and he's like yo that's great i'm gonna use that in <laughs> in a song and it was this gigantic you know hit or whatever <laughs> uh but i was like oh that's man if, if puff is with it like i need to watch i just need to leave television on so i can just get not all these ideas these are free ideas man i'm sleeping ideas just coming <laughs> right in my head <laughs> I'll do I'll right, I'll put on a podcast with a sleep timer. So like, hey, I'll listen mm -hmm. to I don't care if I lose some amount of the next 20 minutes of this program, but and I I I don't I I, sh I can't be looking at something. Like I think that's where I'm at, especially cuz I wear contacts and wear glasses. My my winding down process is 
you know, maybe might watch something with my girlfriend, and then it's like I might watch half an hour, forty five minutes of a movie or something, and then I get a little tired, and then I'll put in my AirPods, and then I'll do the sleep timer, I'll listen to a podcast, like set, or I'll listen to an audiobook rather, I'll set an audiobook. It has to be non, it has to be fiction, and I'll, because I'll, otherwise nonfiction, I start thinking. So I'll put in a fiction, some story, listen to like 15, 20 minutes of it. And if I fall asleep when that's gone, and I keep the AirPods in because they're noise canceling, which is great. Yeah. Uh, and then I wake up three hours later with, as the battery runs out, and I have to change my <laughs> AirPods every night, every night. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. You need, you need daytime pods and sleep pods, sleep AirPods. Oh, I have two pairs. Oh. I have two <laughs> pairs of it. Yeah. I switched, I switched them out, Bryce. Yeah. Hey, smart pro move, pro move. <laughs> yep. Uh, hey, picks. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Uh, here's my pick. I'm trying to think if there's anything sleep wise that I can recommend. You know, um, I, 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 I will. I, this is a speculative pick. Okay. Um, because I have not read um i have not completely read the story that is out of that is based out of this um but i have I, i've seen i've seen i've seen a there's there's like a story going around there's a guy who has a shirt <laughs> and now and now i can't find it unfortunately but um i'll try to find it and put it in the show notes but supposedly the the the, the thing i've seen going around is that um uh, Futurama is like the 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 prime cut for watching something while going to sleep. Really? Uh, to to uh, to such success that there are not one but two different Reddit communities about people who watch Futurama as they go to sleep. Uh, and and I and I think it's 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 a credit to the writing of that show because it's a it's a show where the comedy stands out on the page like it's uh you, well, well, you could so what do you want in in go to sleep content because mm -hmm. i know for me i would understand it if you have a bunch of futurama fans that you like to do it because when i'm on the road i do like to have my phone or ipad or whatever playing things as i go to sleep mm -hmm. so i won't watch the hotel television i will leave something on uh and my only I'll, I'll usually wind up watching either uh, Veep or Arrested Development, and it's uh -huh. largely because I've seen them before. They are shows that I I know I'm not going to. I'm I'm more often than not my pattern brain will be like, oh, this is the one where they do the thing, and there's the one joke, and it's really funny, and then Job comes in and he's dressed like a chicken, and blah 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 blah, and so I'll like. I'll remember that. And so that puts my mind at ease. It's mm -hmm. like a blanket, like for my brain, because I know everything that's going to happen. I don't, I, it would not be the case if I were watching seasons of like, you know, the, I couldn't go to sleep watching the new season of Ted Lasso or something where like, sure. I don't know what's going to happen. And so I, my, my brain would be like, Oh, I wonder, are they going to do this? Are they going to do that? Oh, that was a funny joke. Like, uh, I, my brain is just like like a little dog. Like I'm very excited about it. But if it's if it's all I, hat, then I I, yeah. I feel it's good. I think what you described for Futurama, because I used to do I used to do it with Arrested Development as well. I think what you described for Arrested Development is the same for Futurama. Okay. In that it it has it's a cult hit. People have seen it over and over and over again. Yeah. It so has that, that would that would be there are point. no surprises when you watch Futurama. These are Futurama times. fans. That are going to sleep watching Futurama, not like I have never seen Futurama, Correct. but I have oh, yes. uh, insomnia. I, I should watch Futurama. Exactly. Okay. That's that's it. So um, I'm, I'll try to find the news article about it because there's a news story in like a Vice or something about, uh, hey, we have we, everybody. We just found these subreddits. Um, but so I guess the universal idea would be go to sleep to your favorite show. Yeah, go to watch sleep to your a show. show over and over and over again and go to sleep to it. Right. Um, which is how I. There are just tons. There are entire swaths of Futurama and Arrested Development I could I could recite from memory, or I could recite with like one word of a line given, or something. Yeah, you know, because um, they're because they're they're really strong scripts. Um, so that's uh that that's my pick. Uh, yeah, Torx says uh, uh, Next Generation. Like, yes, uh, there there are times where I rewatch episodes of Next Generation now, and it oh. might put me to sleep in, in terms of some of the There's... transitions. 
if you want to, if you get into the whole YouTube genre of sleep music, yeah, and like channels of like, and they'll do like there'll be videos playing on there uh, of like rainy scenes and stuff like this, and then you know soothing music like, and they're like twenty hours long. <laughs> We do. Let's type in next generation. Here we go. Uh, next generation background ambiance from that because the bridge. It just has that. Uh, oh, you know, yeah, someone was mentioning that in in our Discord server earlier today, and and they had found. Uh, I, I actually think they may have found what you're looking for, which is like. 10 I got the hours link right of, here. Yeah. 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 Do you have it? Or the, oh, here, I'll uh, send it in the chat. Yeah. There's Deep Space Nine quarters. There's all sorts of just this. Uh, yeah, here we go. Ah, this is the PNG bridge. Ooh. It oh, just shows I the, the I can't digital. It, it's very oh, low. Turn it up. Oh, oh it's, it is ambiance. You don't hear that at all, Jim? I mean, unless I'm having a stroke. So it's just the, the bridge sound. The yeah. doo -doo -doo -doo, you know, just yeah, really yeah, yeah. low, chill. Yeah. There's tons of that, like uh, ASMR Cyberpunk Future City. <laughs> Sounds I, I of think rain. That, that and... whole genre is, is fascinating to me. Like, I... that, uh, all, all of the, I mean, the ASMR stuff is... is interesting because it's obviously so primal um but but all the the sleep stuff i think is fascinating because I, it sleep is really just the cornerstone of your of your life <laughs> like it is, it is it is very very crucial we're gonna get to as displays become cheaper you're gonna get you're gonna get the roll-up display that you can just pull it over an entire wall yeah and you're going to get the idea uh, and even cut the display up, make it fit, because you're going to get a thing. I think you're going to start putting and it may not be your primary thing. You might still have a much higher resolution 8K TV, but you might just start making a wall and whatever, because it'll be cool because then you'll start creating content like a augmented reality isn't just glasses. It's the idea of filling up all kinds of spaces and stuff like like, my, you know, the by the way, I got a billboard in New York City, by the way. Hey! And, uh, it's digital you know it's what but that's what you can do with digital is they cover an entire building and do a wrap with it and then it's you know a minute later it's going to be you know robert dugani's latest masterpiece you know and that's kind of the you just think about these things where there's got to be like a more the the rate at which surfaces in our house become displays yeah like i have i have an imac over here i have an ipad older ipad pro here i have another ipad pro here i have my phone i have my computer my lcd display my apple watch here and then the things that are fixed there's a tv here and you just start thinking about how these things just start to more not less uh i you know i i i, I totally agree i think that we're, we're we're moving into a very 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 interesting phase for for you know even as we've had to like buy a couple tvs for the house like God, they're cheap. Like, you know, I, I just got a wild hair one day and I was like, I'm going to Walmart and I'm buying the cheapest, biggest thing there is. Like, I just want very big and very cheap. And it was like $300 for like a 70 inch you know, uh, high sense uh, uh, TV, which considering we use it like once or twice a month, it's just awesome. It's just this great thing that like we're not watching any movies on it's literally just youtube like things it it's uh uh it's 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 clutch it's a pretty big deal yeah gentlemen it's been after hey uh, like i just got a uh, retweet for my post from an upstanding businessman tony caruso wearing a suit this oh guy looks legit. look at that ah that friend nice. of our friend Big of Justin's Tony. from high school, really yeah. cool guy. But yeah, it's all grown up wearing his suit. I know. Alrighty, everybody, we are going to uh, go offline. We'll be back in a couple hours. We got Cord Killers. It'll be uh, Tom Merritt, myself, and Owen JJ Stone, I believe. Mm. That'll be fun. Oh, um, so everybody, tune in for that. At Andrew Main on Twitter, Justin R. Young here on Twitch. 
everybody thank you for having a weird time with us we'll see you next time see ya Yay.